My name's Hannah Baranis, and I'm a scientist at Gulf of Maine Research Institute. I study sea level rise and other coastal hazards. I got interested in studying coastal flooding in the Gulf of Maine back in 2018 when two big winter storms caused record-breaking flooding in the Northeast. And when I dug a little more into those storms, I found something really interesting, which was that this really, really bad flooding happened from storms that weren't actually all that bad. It was just unlucky timing with kind of medium strength storms happening at really high, high tides. So studying flooding where we live along the Gulf of Maine coast is interesting because um, how big the tide is is really what controls how bad flooding is. Sea level is rising and that's because as the earth gets warmer, the ocean also gets warmer and warmer ocean water takes up more space. Also, warmer earth is causing ice sheets and glaciers to melt, adding fresh water to the oceans and making water levels rise. So as sea level rises, we can expect that somewhere around 2050, we're gonna go from seeing just a few days of high tide flooding a year to seeing somewhere around 70. And then later towards the end of the century, around 2100, we might see high tide flooding nearly every day. This is a picture of Portland Pier on July 13th, and if you look really carefully at the picture, it looks a little bit odd at first. There's flooding, but the water's glassy, there aren't that many clouds in the sky, so there is flooding happening without a storm. Where I live in southern Maine, the ocean levels go up and down twice a day by about 10 feet, and that's just caused by forces from the moon, the sun, and Earth's rotation. And you all probably know that phenomenon as tides. We can't always predict what kind of flooding is gonna happen from a storm, but we can predict the tides. So when we think about what to do about flooding from tides, knowing when that flooding is gonna happen and how high the water is gonna go means that we can adapt to it. So this type of high tide flooding isn't only happening in Maine, it's happening all over the world. And my hope is that by studying it in Maine, we can show that as we need to regularly update our buildings and our infrastructure along the coast, we can rebuild in a way that's more resilient to flooding. As the flooding comes, there are also things we can do once the water's here. Um, for example, we can uh, open up the first floors of buildings and leave them for cars. We can move utilities like, um, like heat pumps and furnaces and boilers and electrical panels up to second floors so that when these things get wet, it doesn't make life grind to a halt. And the way we adapt in Maine can set an example for other communities. 